This video begins the lecture series in Chapter 10, dealing with electrophilic addition to alkenes. Now, as a preview, we're going to uh, we're going to come back to uh, reactions that we've already seen in Chapter 3, uh, mainly dealing with um, two uh, types of reactions to alkenes, and and so we've already um, seen addition reactions to alkenes, namely if you react an alkene with HBr. Uh, we know that uh, the pi bond attacks the sigma star of the HBr bond. You generate a carbocation, and then the nucleophile, nucleophilic bromide um, attacks that carbocation, and so we get something like this. So we add HBr across the double bond, hence the term addition reaction. Um, and of course, we have learned that in this process, we make uh, what we call an alkyl halide. So we know that we can make alkyl halides from alkenes. The other reaction that we saw in chapter 3 is a similar mechanism in that we take um, the hydronium ion, so we take water in some type of acid like sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid, um, and we can add water across the double bond. And so we get um, alcohols from this. Now, if you're still uh, struggling with these types of reactions, you certainly need to go back and review chapter three because, um, you know, uh, throughout the chapter, um, these types of reactions are referred to often, and I'm going to assume that you know how to do them and you know what the product is going to be of them, right? Now, um, what we're going to do with this is we're going to explore the addition of a variety of electrophiles to alkenes. So we see that H, X, um, be, even if X is a halide or water for that matter, um, is electrophilic. And so the pi bond is a nucleophile and it can attack an electrophile. Hence the term electrophilic addition reaction. So these types of reactions are called electrophilic addition because you are taking a pi, um, an alkene, a pi bond, as a nucleophile and you're reacting it with an electrophile. That's why we call it electrophilic addition. So in general we have a nucleophile in the pi bond reacting with an electrophile. And that electrophile can be some XY. Um, and for most of these reactions, we're going to see that that generates a carbocation. And, and, and then, so let's say if X is uh, the electrophilic portion, uh, the pi bond attacks X, the XY bond breaks, you form Y minus, and then that creates a nucleophile that attacks the carbocation. That's going to be a pattern that kind of develops, and if you understand that pattern, uh, then you can, uh, it makes it easier to predict electrophilic addition reactions. And so we get the addition of X, Y across the double bond, okay? So if we have um, a, a type of mechanism that generates carbocations, we're going to really need to understand um, those, we're, we're going to under, have to understand carbocations and carbocation stability. So these are some of the things that we're going to think about um, throughout chapter 10. The first being is, well, what species forms when an alkene donates its pi electrons to an electrophile? For the most part, we see the formation of a carbocation. Now, in some instances, we're going to see some other type of species um, simply due to stability issues. Uh, but for a lot of the reactions, we're going to see carbocation uh, formation. And because of that, we also have to think about how resonance effects and inductive effects can help us to understand the distribution of charge namely on a carbocation. <clears throat> and if that charge, um, if that distribution of charge uh, can produce resonance structures, then we have to think about um, the various types of, of products that we can get from that. Hence, we also have to think about how carbocations rearrange to form more stable species, be they carbocations or other species. These are the things that we're going to be looking at throughout chapter 10 in order to get us prepared 
in terms of looking at a variety of addition reactions in chapter 11. So chapter 10 really focuses on um, <clears throat> understanding carbocations, their stability, their rearrangements, um, and looking at the addition of HBr or HCl or water in acid. We're then going to look at what happens um, in certain scenarios where instead of um, getting addition, we can get dimerization or polymerization. And then we're going to uh, take a look at a reaction um, that produces in the end an alcohol, but an alcohol uh, that has different regiochemistry than that of what we've been looking at so far.